This is a homemade clock that uses homemade 7 segment displays with a vintage look of Nixie tubes. I've made them using filament shape LEDs like these ones, soldered together using some solid wires. Once I had the shape, I've placed a plastic bottle over to simulate a glass vacuum tube. The case is made out of wood and painted with some dark varnish. You could set the hour or minute just by pushing these buttons. And the system using a real-time clock module, so the time will be saved even if you unplug the clock. To control 4 of these 7 segment displays, I'm using the Mac 7219 driver and that will make everything easier. In this video, you will learn how to make the homemade 7 segment displays, how the Mac 7219 driver works and multiplexes the outputs, how to create the code for real time clock and build a vintage look clock. Before we start, make sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell in order to see my future videos. Also, thanks to all my Patreons. So guys, let's get started. This video is sponsored by JLC PCB. Great news about their services. JLC PCB has a widely priced cut for 1 to 6 layers boards and also an offer for PCB together with the stencil. The price is 15 to 20% lower on stencil. 25% on multi-layer PCBs and 5 to 20% on batch PCBs. Production time and shipping is just a couple of days, so order your PCBs now for very low prices. What's up my friends, welcome back. As you can see, this is made with some filament shape LEDs that creates a 7 segment displays inside of a plastic bottle and that gives this project a Nixie tube vintage look. This is all that we need for this project, so check the full part list below in the description of the video. To create the support of the 7 segment display, I've used some of this wire and the first thing that I did was to measure its resistance. We need a low resistance in order to know that it will conduct electricity very well and I'm guessing this is a steel wire. Its resistance is very low, so perfect. Next, we need some plastic bottles like these ones that I bought for a few cents. This will simulate a Nixie tube look. Then we also need some LEDs like these ones. This is a string of very small LEDs inside of a rubber tube and that makes this look like an LED in a filament shape. I will make 4 of these tubes, each with 7 of these LEDs, so we need a total of 28 LEDs. I will use 2 more round 3mm LEDs to create the clock dot, since this will be a vintage look clock project. To control the LEDs, we need the Mac 7219 Matrix controller, an Arduino Nano, 3 push buttons in order to set the time, and the real time clock module in order to know the real time. I've bought this wood case for $2, but you also have a 3D printable case below if you want that. But using a wood case, this will give this project a more vintage look. We also need a DC adapter with an output between 7 and 15 volts and a DC plug like this one. I've also printed these plastic bases for the tubes. You could download the STL files for this project from below. Ok, so let's start making the tubes. I get the steel wire, the LEDs, pliers, solder and the plastic base. Then I take a cardboard box, very small, and make a hole in the middle and then I place the plastic part over the hole. I measure the size and then I cut a piece of the steel wire and bend it on the tip. Now I heat the wire a little bit and insert it into the plastic support and then I add a little bit of hot glue on the bottom so the wire won't move. This will be the first ground pin. I make sure which is the ground connection of the LED and then I solder it to the steel wire. I then add another wire on the other side and solder it to the positive pin of the LED and now we have the first segment placed. Then I add the next segment connected to the same ground pin. I do the same for all the segments and I'll end up with 7 wires for the positive pin of the LEDs and 3 ground pins that I've soldered together in just one pin. I finally have all the segments. It doesn't look like a 7 segment display from the side, but when I turn it around, there you have it. 
7 segments in the shape of an 8. I now take one of the bottles and first I clean the milliliter label. That makes the bottle a little bit opaque, so that will be the back side of the tube. I now cut the bottom part of the bottle with a knife. I make sure it is flat and now I could fit the bottle over the plastic printed parts and that's it. I've got myself a Nixie tube, which actually is a 7 segment display. On the bottom side, on the inside of the plastic part, I place a lot of hot glue so the wires will stay in this shape. That's it, I have one Nixie tube and in the same way I make 3 more and now I have all I need. I take the wood case and make some measurements. Then I make some hole but smaller than the plastic supports so I could place the tubes over this wood case. Before I add the buttons and the DC plug, using some varnish I give this case a better and more vintage look. Using a sponge roller I apply the dark varnish and now the case looks a lot better. I let it dry for a few minutes and now I could add the buttons and the plug. I add 3 push buttons on one corner that will be used to set the time. I also glue in place on the back of the case the DC plug using some hot glue. Finally I place the 7 segment displays and glue them in place using some hot glue as well and the case is ready. Use this schematic and make all the connections. This Mac 72 19 driver could control 4 7 segment displays. And here is how this chip does that. Each 7 segment displays has 7 segments, obviously, each labeled with a letter from A to G. We connect all the A segments together from all the 7 segment displays, all the B's, all the C's and so on. Then we will have 4 different ground pins for each display. In this way if the driver activates the A segments but only activates the ground pin of the first display, only this segment will be turned on. But if I activate the ground pin of both the first and the third display, it will turn on the A segment of both displays. The driver will do this very fast, so our eyes won't see the change. So that's why we need an LED driver. I make the connections as in the schematic, from the driver to the 7 segment display. I have the segments with brown wires and the common ground with 4 black wires. Then I make the connections for 5 volts ground, data, clock and chipset connections from the Arduino Nano to the driver. I make connections from the DC plug to the VIN pin of the Arduino and from the push buttons to digital pin D3, D4 and D5. Finally I connect the real time clock module to the I2C pins of the Arduino which are A4 and A5 for data and clock. The module has a battery. So even the plug of the clock is disconnected, it will still save the real time for over an year. Now the clock is ready, all we have to do is to program it. Download this code from below. This first code is very short. Make sure you also download the real time library and install it to your Arduino IDE. Ok so this code will set the actual time. Type here on these lines the hour the day and year and upload this code. Once uploaded, comment back these lines and upload the code once again and open the serial monitor. And here we have the real time. The time is now set. Now download the second code for the 7 segment clock. This code will get the hour from the real time module. Then it will shift the data to the 7 segment display driver and by that will show the time. Each time we press one of the buttons, a set time loop will be activated. Read all the comments in the code, line by line to understand more. Upload this code and let's test it. So now here I have the hour so the clock works. At the beginning I first wanted to use 3 buttons. But now I press the hour button and I set the hour. Then if I press the minute button I set the minute. After I finish setting the time, the new value is saved to the real time module. And that's it, that's how this clock works. So there you have it guys. This is how I've made my vintage look clock based on a homemade 7 segment display that also looks like Nixie tubes. What I've noticed is that the plastic bottles are too shiny so the light glows too much. I can see the numbers better without the bottles. I might paint these bottles in red or maybe orange so the light won't glow this much. 
Also, one other bad thing is that the light of these LEDs is not filling the entire filament. Only the middle part of the segment is 100% light, and that makes the number to be difficult to read. But I think that when I will paint the tubes, the light will be a lot better. Stay tuned for updates on my webpage electronubes.com. And by the way, you have the schematics, the codes, the STL files and more photos below in the description of this video. I hope that you liked this video and that you have learned something new. And if so, don't forget to subscribe and activate the notification bell for future videos. Also, click the like button like crazy and share this video with your friends. And remember, if you consider helping my projects, check my Patreon page as well. So thanks again and see you later guys.